Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel. This is your tip of the week and it's all about how to make piping. There's so many different presser feet you can use. There's different types of cording that you can see here. So let's get started. There are many different sizes of cording that is available out there. Some of them are a little bit harder to find than others. So here are some of the ones that I have used. I mostly use these two right here. This one's a little bigger and this one is smaller. These are the ones I find the most. This real little skinny one here, I don't see all that often. Maybe it is at Joann's. I just never really looked for it. I haven't had a need for it, so that's why I don't use it. This one I've, is really big. I've used it one time, and the larger cording is a little bit more challenging to put on your object, whether it's a pillow or a tote bag, whatever you want to put this on. When you are cutting your cording, you want to make sure that you take a piece of tape. So I'm taking a piece of scotch tape here and I'm going to wrap it around where I want to cut it. Because if you don't do this, it will unravel immediately. So make sure you do that. And then I'm going to just cut right down through the middle. Now, I use a rotary cutter because I'm terrible with scissors. So this is why I'm using it, but you can use scissors. And I'm just going to go right through it like that. And it doesn't unravel. Now, if you don't tape it, I want to show you what it does. The moment you begin to move it, it starts doing that. And it'll just keep going and keep going and keep going. So always tape it. Now let's take a look at some of the presser feet to use when you are creating your piping. We interrupt this video for an important announcement. The winner of the Fall Quilt Block Giveaway is Cynthia Jacobs. Congratulations, Cynthia. Now, Cynthia, make sure you contact us at the Sewing Room Channel at gmail.com. Thank you everyone who participated in the contest. Now let's get back to that video. You can use a zipper foot or a dedicated cording slash piping foot. And this is a small zipper foot for my baby lock. And then this is a, a piping foot for my Viking, and it's an older machine, so this foot I've had for many years. These two right here are piping slash cording feet. This is for my baby lock crescendo, and this is for my baby lock serger. So you can get them for your serger. Let me demonstrate how this one is used. You always cut your fabric wider than what you need. You can, you can trim it off later because it's going to be much easier to control the fabric if it's oversized. So you wrap it around and then put the foot right there and you're going to move your needle to the side that's closest to the cording and you're just going to sort of hug the cording as you go down, like that. Now, on my Viking, I have this foot here. So, again, it works the same way. You just put it there like that, move your needle over closest to the cording, and go down like that. Now let's take a look at the, the dedicated cording slash piping feet. This is my piping foot for my baby lock crescendo. This is my piping foot for my baby lock triumph serger. When I turn them over, you will notice that there are, are grooves along the back going somewhat in the center. They both have it. 
your cording fits in there. Okay, now the only problem with these two presser feet, and it's not a major problem, but it, it can be an issue at times, is here is the cording that I have here. It's made by Simplicity. I bought it at Walmart. It's 3 sixteenths of an inch or 4.72 millimeters. And it's the only size that will fit in these unless you can even find something smaller. So you're limited to just one size. So how these work is it's just like the other feet. You fold your fabric over and then you put your foot on top and then you move your needle over to one side and it holds the cording in place while it stitches right along the edge. So this is what it looks like when it's done. Over here on the serger one, it does the same thing. It holds it right in there in that groove, but with a serger, it cuts the edge of the fabric off to, so that it's an even width and it stitches along the cording and binds the edges so that it looks like this one. So the downside of this one is, and it's again not a major issue, is once you're done you need to trim this off. So let me show you how to do that. The method I'm going to show you is a little tedious, but I've used it for a long time. As long as your piping is not too long, you can get it cut down fairly quickly. So what I've done is, let's say I want to do a half inch wide seam. I'm going to put the half inch line on the stitch line. And the problem with cording is it kind of curves. So you can only do a small section at a time. So I've got my half inch line on there and I'm going to cut. And then I'm going to readjust and cut some more. And you would keep doing that all the way down. Now let me show you another method. There is a tool you can buy that's called Piping Hot Binding and it trims it off. It has a groove in the back that your piping or your cording goes in and it looks like this. So whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you can turn it and place it according to whether you're left or right. So let me show you how it works. So you put your cording right in that groove, right at the edge of where this uh, yellow paper is. This is clear acrylic, so I, I think it's probably hard for you to see. And you put it in there. Now, I found it a little hard to keep putting it in the groove, but, you know, some people swear by this. It's not my favorite tool. And then you just go along and you cut it. Now. This one is for a half inch seam. And then this one over here is for your quarter inch seam. So that's one good thing about it. But because I'm left-handed, I just found it easier <laughs> to do this side. So the, the downside of this tool, let me finish cutting this, is that it only holds this one size cording. I, sh I take that back, two size. Let me show you the little skinny stuff that it, that it comes in the kit. I've never used cording that tiny, but maybe there is a call for it. So there are tools out there. Buyer beware. If you know somebody who's got one, test it out and see if you're comfortable with it. I don't use it. Maybe if I used it more often, I might uh, like it, but because it doesn't hold the, the cording that I like to use, Therefore, I was dissatisfied with the product, but it does work if you have the right size cording. When you cut your fabric to go around the cording, this is something really important you need to understand, 
is that if your seam is just a straight seam, you're not going around any curve, then you can cut your fabric on the straight grain. But if it's gonna, let's say, go on a pillow where it's gonna go around corners, you need to cut your fabric on the bias. If you're not sure how to do that, there will be a link below your YouTube screen. So you scroll down below your screen and you will see a link that you can click on that'll take you to that tutorial. One of the things that I like to do if I want a solid color and I don't feel like cutting my fabric on the bias, I will buy bias tape and put my cording in it like I did here. So I was doing some Christmas projects. I wanted solid red and I didn't happen to have any solid red fabric, but I had this piping. So uh, you could get just single fold and that should be enough for really, really small cording. But if you're doing a, lot or a larger cording, you can get double fold. And then I just press it open however much I need, and then I will take it and wrap it around and stitch it, just like I demonstrated earlier. I'm at my Baby Lock Triumph Serger, and I've set my machine to just your basic overlock stitch. I've got the presser foot on, and then the groove, remember, is right here. And this is where you're going to insert the cording. So wrap your fabric around. Let me get this in here. And lift up the presser foot. And you might have to just lift it a little bit higher and make sure the cording is under there is right in that groove and then go ahead and you might have to just force it a little bit at first okay it's taking it thank goodness and make sure your fabric is wrapped around it good and yeah, let me get it in here just a little bit more okay here we go Almost done. And there you can see it's cut the fabric and bind the edges and stitched right along the cording. Well, I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. It took some of the mystery and confusion out of making your piping. If you're interested in other beginner sewing projects and other tips of the week, look below your YouTube screen for those video links. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and make sure you go and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny. See you next time.